Because if they say that you have not known sin, you die for sinners and present them righteous to the Father when I believe that the only righteous one is you. Suddenly, I realized that my body began to tremble because it seemed to me that he was listening to my thoughts. And while the blood ran down his disfigured body, he told me with his eyes, if I do not come down from this cross, it is because of the love that I have for you. didn't know what to do. Some made fun of him. Others at a distance cried because this was the last time that they would see him. Although he said apparently that on the third day he would rise up again from the grave. And honestly, I don't want to be here. This is why they ordered me to guard his grave. I don't know why, but I feel a little fearful. Also, I don't believe that this man will come out of the grave. And furthermore, I don't think he can move this heavy stone. We watched him die. What's more, we pierced a spear into his side. And his legs, it was not necessary to break them. He was dead. Now that I remember, there have been so many false prophets who claimed to be the Messiah. So we wait. Jesus, my son, because you did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but rather renounced everything that was yours taking the place of a servant in the condition of a man, making yourself obedient unto death, I raised you up with the power of the Holy Spirit overcoming death, and I give you the highest honor and the most excellent of all the names that are above all names. Well, it, it is already dawn. And as expected, nothing happened. Without a doubt, this man was another false prophet who claimed to be the Messiah. What's going on? He can't be, the stone is moving. I, I, I can't believe it. He is risen. Jesus lives.
John 1, 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Exodus 12, 1 through 8. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for the whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of this month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lamb. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Well, good morning, Stockton Covenant family, friends, and visitors here and those that are very real in this virtual space. My name is Phil Nesta, and I should probably play the song. <laughs> and I serve as co-pastor for this church, along with my wife. And uh, didn't John do a wonderful job? Can we just give John another round of applause? <laughs> with that fictional monologue that uh, dramatized um, possibly what a soldier must have felt can you imagine uh, coming into contact with Jesus and being at the foot of the cross and watching Jesus die and um, all the words that he proclaimed um, uh, in the last minutes of his, of his, of his life? Um, there was a, a scripture that we read on Friday, and, and it said that um, the centurion said as he watched Jesus, and it said that he glorified God and um at the foot of the cross, and he said, truly, this was a righteous man as he watched Jesus die. And there was um, uh, possibly two soldiers that were guarding the, the, the tomb, and, uh, and they were witnesses of the removal of the stone and uh, finding that the tomb was empty. So there was, there was a, a Roman soldiers that came into contact with, with this powerful uh, display of God's power raising of Jesus from the dead. Well, we also thank the musicians. Um, it was a truly a, a worship-led um, uh, worship. And just a, a, a disclaimer, I was recently diagnosed with Bell's palsy. Um, it, it's not a permanent condition. It's just a paralyzing half of my face. So I, I talk a little, I talk a little funny, like, like if I, I you know, um, something happened, but uh, it'll be fine. Uh, the doctor said that in a couple of weeks, uh, I should be fine. So, um, But today is a special day uh, for all believers that celebrate, because we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. His resurrection reminds us of our wonderful hope that one day 
we will be resurrected in new and eternal life. On Friday, we met together to remember the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross. Today, we are going to be looking at what was the why that led Jesus to the cross. Why did Jesus die on the 14th day of Nisan in the Hebrew calendar? This is probably not new to you, but it is important for us to remember every single time that we have a resurrection, to remember the 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 the, the uh, everything that happened, so that we can appreciate um, what God did for us. So, first of all, why? Well, Jesus died to fulfill Scripture. Jesus was literally acting out the role of the Passover lamb from the passage of the Scripture that we read in Exodus chapter twelve. Since the Passover ritual pointed to Jesus' sacrifice then Jesus mirrored exactly um, everything that the Passover lamb um, uh, um, that, that was designated for the Passover lamb. In scripture, Jesus fulfilled 574 prophecies in the Old Testament. But today we're going to be looking at the, at, at the passage of the Passover, uh, that w- which was instituted by God. The Passover was a memorial feast that was rich with symbolism that was instructional at the time so that the Hebrews would be saved from the last plague of God that God was sending to the Egyptians. The Hebrews were in bondage for 400 years in Egypt. God calls Moses so that he can lead them out of bondage. So in the process, he sends plagues. And Pharaoh's heart hardened every single time until the last plague. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, the tenth plague, Pharaoh did agree to free the Hebrews. Each plague that he sent, it was an attack to the Egyptian gods so that they could know that the almighty God was more powerful than their little gods. All nine plagues only affected the Egyptians. The Hebrews were not affected in their city of Goshen, but by, any, uh, but by the tenth plague, this plague had the potential to, to affect all of them in the land of Egypt. This was a, a, a judgment that was, that was to be executed by God's angel. So God designed a saving plan for the Hebrews, the Passover feast. Here, the instructions um, that he gave in Exodus chapter 12, they were to choose a male sheep or a goat that was one year old from their herds on the 10th day of the month of Nisan and keep it for four days in their homes, kind of like a pet. A lot could happen in four days. The lamb had to be free from defect or blemish. They were to eat it with bitter herbs and spices and with unleavened bread. Later, they were to folk, uh, later they incorporated uh, four cups in this feast. They had to eat this girded and their sandals ready because God was going to deliver them from bondage. From the blood of the lamb, they were to paint with hyssop the lentils and the doorpost of their doorways to signify um, that they were covered by this, this blood of the lamb. And the Passover, which is Pisa in Hebrew or Pasqua in Spanish, literally means to pass over or pass by. As the angel of execution passed on by all the houses that had the blood of the lamb in their doorways. Then they were commanded to, to um, well, they were commanded to sacrifice it and eat it. So can you imagine the attachment that took place in those four days with this lamb? I wish we had a lamb to display this. I don't know if we can, maybe um, if Juana can find me a lamb, I don't know. (laughs) So the Nestas welcome our newest addition of the family. (laughs) We had um, Luna for seven days, and we've grown an, an extreme attachment uh, to, to this little lamb. 
Um, you know, it's not exactly one year, it's a little bit younger. Um, but um, the funny thing about sheep is that they're, they're so attached, like right off their innate ability is to follow you. Um, we've we've um, clothed her, we've named her in these couple of days, we've uh, fed her, um, we've groomed her, <laughs> and, uh, and we've walked her like a dog. <laughs> And she doesn't even need a leash because she, their, their innate ability is just to follow. So as you're walking, as they get used to you, you're walking and they're, they're walking right in between your legs and almost make you trip. Um, but she's, she's been a blessing. <laughs> we couldn't find a male, but we're, we're, we're not gonna. <laughs> We're equally gender. <laughs> um, so everything that God commanded in Scripture had meaning. And this Passover lamb uh, um, was a direct mirror of what Jesus was going to do in the New Testament. So John the, John the Baptist discerned correctly when he says that Jesus was the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Just look at the parallels between Jesus and the Passover lamb. In the Holy Week, Jesus enters Jerusalem on the same day that the Jews were selecting the Passover lamb on the 10th day of Nisan. Passover was celebrated with unleavened bread and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And as a matter of fact, during the Passover, that, that Passover time, as the, the, the Hebrews or the Jews were cleaning their houses as they were accustomed to do during this period. They had to clean all their house, looking for all the yeast because the yeast represented sin. And so they cleaned all their house from yeast. And at the same time, the Hebrews were cleaning their houses of yeast. Jesus entered his father's house and cleaned it, overturning tables. Jesus lived with humanity for a short period of time just like this Passover lamb with the Hebrews. Jesus, as, as the, the lambs were inspected by the priests to approve, to be approved, to, to be if they were suitable for the sacrifice, Jesus was inspected himself by the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious Jewish leaders, and ultimately appears before Caiaphas, the high priest, which was the person that was ultimately in charge of approving all Passover sacrifices. Some scholars believe that at the same time that the lambs were being sacrificed in the temple, Jesus was being crucified in Golgotha from the hour 3 to 6 p.m. Just as the lambs could not have any blemishes, Jesus was sinless, a sinless, the sinless lamb of God. Just as lambs could not have any broken legs, neither did Jesus he did not need to, his legs did not need to be broken because as customary, as people were hanging on the cross, they broke their legs so that they can die quicker. But Jesus was already dead. Jesus, in fact, was the Lamb of God, God's chosen Passover Lamb that was sacrificed so that we can be saved for the day of judgment. Jesus was chosen by God to be the suitable sacrifice as a substitutionary sacrifice whose blood was shed and, and covered the doorway of our hearts so that on the coming judgment, the judgment can pass right over us. So many poor innocent animals have died in the past to atone for the sins of Israel. But there has only been one, which is the Lamb of God, that shed the blood and paid for sin once and for eternity. Jesus um, uh, celebrated the Passover, but then he instituted something new, which is called the Lord's Supper. He says to his disciples, I have been eagerly waiting to celebrate this Passover meal with you. Jesus gives new meaning to this Passover, and he institutes this Lord, the Lord's Supper. But listen, the elements of the Lord's Supper are bread and wine. Where is the lamb? The lamb has already been replaced by Jesus, and we don't need the lamb anymore. So no more bitter herbs, 
no more lamb, because Jesus himself is the lamb of God that was sacrificed. Jesus said, I will celebrate this meal again. The Passover will literally be a reality when judgment passes over us in the day when, when his kingdom comes. So why? It was to save us, to save each and every one of us from the coming judgment. So the judgment can pass over us as we cling on and, and by faith receive that sacrifice that Jesus did for us and paint our doorway of our hearts with the blood of the Lamb. The second why is because Jesus was also the scapegoat. In 1 Peter, it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. He bore. What does this mean? The apostle is evident, evidently quoting Isaiah 53, verse 12. In the Old Testament, to bear sins or iniquity means to suffer the punishment of sin, whether one's own sin or the sin of others. In the description of the ceremonial day of atonement in Leviticus 16, it says in verse 22, that the scapegoat shall bear upon their iniquities unto the land of the inhabited. Where the scapegoat is, is representing, uh, sorry, where the scapegoat is representing as bearing the sins of the people and taking them away. Now listen to again what John says, John the Baptist, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Lambs and goats were used continuously in, in the Old Testament. Um, the Lord took away um, our sins and he bore them upon himself. And as Aaron put the sins of the people on the head of the scapegoat and the goat uh, was to bear upon him unto the land of the inhabitants, so the Lord blessed, uh, uh, blessed the Savior. So the Lord on the blessed Savior, the iniquity of us all. And he bare our sins in his own body on the cross. And there dying in our place, took them away. He bare them on himself as the scapegoat bare uh, him the iniquities of Israel. It was the burden of sin, which made uh, sacred body sweat great drips of blood, great drops of blood in his awful agony. One thing is to pay for something you did, like pay for a ticket, go to court, go to jail, um, or, or any, of, any, any of the sort. And one thing is to do it if you're guilty, but another thing is to pay for, for a, a crime that you did not commit. I could just imagine, I could compare it uh, very briefly and, and, or loosely with, with people that have, um, been blamed uh, unjustly, like the Central Park Five teenagers. In 1989, five black and Latino teenagers from Harlem were convicting of raping a white woman. They spent anywhere, their sentences were from six to 13, 13 years in prison, only to discover that they were innocent. Brian Stevenson uh, and his Just Mercy organization Help, have helped exonerate falsely and poorly represented accused African Americans that have gone to jail unjustly. Can you imagine paying for a crime that you didn't commit? That was Jesus. Jesus bore our sin. Jesus uh, paid the price of our sin like this scapegoat. So why? It was to carry our sentence of our sin and heal humanity of, of the, the nature that draws us to sin by providing us with the new spiritual nature, which is the feeling of the Holy Spirit. So in Psalm 103, it says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And then the third why, just to, just to end this, because he loved us. Say it with me, because he loved us. In John 3, 16, it says, God so loved the world. And it comes right after Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus and explains to him that he must be lifted up 
It was as Jesus already knew that he was going to die on the cross and that he was going to pay for the sins of the world. And that, and then he explains, God so loved the world. I'm doing this, God so loved the world. So the reason why Jesus went to the cross was because he loved us. And I love the drama where the, where the soldier feels like if Jesus is telling him, I don't get down from this cross. The reason I don't get down from this cross, it is because I love you. Jesus could have came down from the cross. He could have ordered legions of angels to help him. But he didn't because he loved us, because he needed to save us. P.P. Walderstrom, a theologian that talked about the sacrifice of Jesus, said that the reason God developed his plan of atonement and sacrifice is because of the love, the immense love that he has for humanity. The immense love that he has for humankind because he created them. It is because of this love, not to quench the wrath of God, but it was because of love that motivated him to send his son, to give his son, and to die for humanity. So what is this, this third reason? It is because he loved us. And because of that love, Jesus freely gave his life. And just as, as the sheep is led to the slaughter, Jesus willingly went to the cross and died for us. So let me ask you, how does that make you feel? How does that, 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 that make you feel that, that Jesus taking our place on the cross because of our sins? I know how it makes me feel. It makes me feel thankful. And it makes me feel like I want to love him back. And this is the power of the cross. This is the power of the message of the cross. Because he was willing to do this for us. He, we draw on to him. So I'm going to ask you this morning, how is your commitment to God? How does this make you feel? And I know if, if you feel like anything like me, as I remember what Jesus did on the cross for me, and, and as, I, as I know that it was because he loved me, this makes me want to love him back. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the developing this plan of salvation for us. We were supposed to be on that cross. The wages of sin is death, and we deserve to die. And you developed this, this, um, these metaphors in the Old Testament that lived out in the life of Jesus so that he can display your perfect love that he has for us by dying on the cross in our place. So on this Easter afternoon, we thank you. We thank you because Jesus has risen from the dead and that is our hope that one day we will rise again in newness of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us prepare our hearts for the communion. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast that he has prepared. If you will be taking communion and you don't have a cup, just raise your hand and we can get it to you.
Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord Jesus, our Savior, blessed forever, to you be praise and honor for giving yourself, shedding your blood, and letting your body be broken in death for our sake so that we might have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Bless, O oh God, this bread which we eat together and the cup which we together drink. Let us through this blessed bread and this blessed cup become partakers of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. body of Christ, which is broken for you. And this cup is the new covenant in the blood of Christ. Drink. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as a living as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood, give us now your peace and grant us strength and courage through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to continue in worship now with a song called Nailed to the Cross. If this is new to you, feel free to listen to the first verse and chorus. We're going to repeat that, and then you can join when you're ready. When I stand accused by my regrets And the devil roars his empty threats I would preach the gospel to myself that I am not, not condemned, for Jesus Christ is my defense. My sin is Thank you. 
when I stand before the throne at last. His love will clean my inner sense. I will worship Him with holy hands. Raise a song that never ends. Jesus Christ, righteousness. My sin is nailed to the cross. My soul is. 